Hey there, I wanted to uh, make a quick overview of uh, the Service Planner app that we've put together here because uh, we've brought on a couple new volunteers here who uh, will be working with this. Just wanted to uh, have it all in one place for uh, people to reference back to in the future. So uh, what this app does is uh, it solves the problem of uh, running a service and automating all of the things that need to happen. And uh, so with that, uh, let's say we're going, we're in pre-roll live host segment right now, and we're going to go into worship, into song one. Uh, normally speaking, we'd have to cue a couple video switcher macros, turn lyrics on, cue a background on the LED wall, depending on what campus you're at, um, and do some things with hallway TVs. And it's just a lot of steps and a lot of actions that have to be done with that, that you have to remember. And that can be difficult, uh, when you're already doing a lot of things and a lot's on your mind already. And so what this app solves is, um, that, uh, it will uh, help us schedule all of the actions that need to be done for each item here, which is pretty neat. And uh, so uh, we can get started with that. Um, to start off with, um, you're going to run the main.py uh, file right here. And it talks to Planning Center. And right here, this is asking us which folder on Planning Center the plan that we want to load up lives in and uh, this one lives in the Lakeland Adult Worship folder and so I'm going to click that and then this particular plan is uh, February 13th and so I'm picking the planning center plan for today's day or whatever day we're interested in so February 13th and we can see that each item here corresponds with a item on planning center which is cool and um, basic operation is extremely simple. You just have a previous and a next button. Normally speaking, you're just interested in next. And uh, it talks with Planning Center Live, which is neat. And so if we come over here and uh, go to our live page, we can see we're not live or anything right now. But when we hit next, it will take control and go live on the first item. And then we can next and next and next and so on and uh, same works with previous and so on but uh, this isn't doing us any good right now because it's not actually queuing anything and so with that we need to add some devices and your devices can be uh, well let's look if you uh, go to settings here and then hit open device editor um, and then we hit add new device. These are all of the devices that this app can talk to you right now. And, uh, let's go ahead and add a pro video player. Uh, let me pull up the IP address on my other screen here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, in this particular case, uh, I'm going to add a computer that's running Pro Video Player. And this is just going to be the IP address of the computer, which in my case is 10.1.60.91. Uh, target port is going to be uh, specific to that machine. And so what we're going to do is in the Pro Video Player menus, we're going to go up to Preferences. Uh, network and make sure that's enabled and um, our port number is going to be 49343 so 49343 and um, you're just going to match the settings I have here you don't worry about these other two boxes and um, we're going to confirm that our IP address is correct uh, if we go up to system preferences and then uh, network and um, make sure the right adapter is selected and uh, there's our 10.1.60.91 and then our PVP port is 49.343 and I'm just going to name this CG2 and that name can be whatever you want it to be uh, just to help you know what it is is all that it is and I'm going to hit add and then here's our CG2 machine so with that uh, let's add another device 
and um, let's say we have a Ross Carbonite video switcher and uh, let's uh, just name this video switcher and um, the IP address will be 10.160.13 and this will be different in your case that's just what it is for me and uh, use the default port 7788 and um, something cool that we can do here is um, for Ross Carbonite stuff uh, the main functionality of this app is queuing custom controls and so we have our bank one two three four five six seven eight and then our actual CC's or macros within that 1 to 32 and um, we can create some labels for that to help us later on um, and so what I'm gonna do is uh, down here we have this carbonite CC name template file right here it's just a open document spreadsheet um, and uh, this can hold all of our names for those custom controls. So uh, just copy paste that, make a new version of it. Um, and I'm gonna rename that, it can be whatever you want it to be. And uh, we're gonna tell it where, um, where this file is. And you have to do this upon creation of the device in this case. So uh, let's add custom control labels and it's going to ask us where it is and uh, this will be um, this right here and add and there's our switcher and we'll come back to the labels later yeah. just know that you have to do that on the very start and so uh, let's do one more let's uh, add a let's add a resi decoder and let's just name that um, we can just name that Resi. And our IP address, um, let's just make something up here. 10.1.60.212, I don't know. And use a default port on this again, 7788. And uh, that's all you gotta do. Uh, IP address report was not enter. oh, that's a bug. <laughs> Um, so we have all of our devices here. If I pull over my um, one that I'm actually using here at Lakeland, we see we have a ton of devices. And um, when you have this many, it turns out to be really helpful. Uh, we have things like um, network connected electrical relays, and we can turn Pastor Joel's teaching TV on and off and change hallway volume and video router stuff and microphone receivers and all of those things. So uh, with that, uh, that's all going to be under the add new device here. So now that our devices are added, uh, all we have to do is uh, hit write changes to disk and boom. There we go. And they are ready to use. Uh, we just have to restart our, our app. And uh, so I'm going to close it out and navigate back to our folder and um, run our main again. And let's load up the same plan. And now uh, what we can do is go over to uh, the settings for one of our service items. So I'm just going to go to the online countdown timer, hit that. And uh, here we have uh, our devices on the right here. So let's just say for our online countdown timer, we want to queue a video. So let's uh, go to add CG2 and um, uh, go to the correct playlist, uh, let's just say video playback, and then um, uh, let's play our campus news video. And uh, let's also do a video switcher uh, CC, and let's do like bank one CC number eight, which will correspond with our bank one number eight right here and 
add and that's it and so let's go ahead and hit add cues it'll do its thing and uh, if you notice it made this note right here for the online campus uh, countdown timer and that is where this app stores all of its data is in the planning center notes section for each item and uh, so with that what I would recommend is just going in and hiding that so you don't have to look at it because it can get kind of long occasionally depending on how many cues you have so uh, just be aware of that that these cues are stored in the notes section for uh, each item and uh, so we have that and then we have the pre-roll video let's uh, go ahead and add pre-roll and let's add another custom control I don't know 113 whatever one we want and uh, let's remind us um, after this is queued let's remind us one well let's remind us five seconds after it's queued uh, test reminder okay and okay there we have it and let's say for message um, we're gonna do resi and we're gonna play that and we're gonna do another custom control let's do like 223 or whatever whatever we have set and um, add and so you would just go out and build your service out. Uh, for example, I'll show you what uh, this weekend looks like for me. And load this one up. So this weekend coming up is the 6th. And with that, uh, here we have... Um, well, first of all, on the right here, we have some uh, AJA key pros. Those are just devices under device editor. All of these, we would just add new device, AJA key pro, and so on. So that's what those are. And then our bottom one is a QLXD uh, Shure microphone receivers. Uh, we can't control these at all at the moment, but it does show us... Um, battery levels and RF levels and basically it's just useful to see if somebody forgot to turn their mic on and so on. Uh, but beyond that we have um, on our pre-service playlist we have uh, a whole bunch of cues here and then so on with all of these and uh, if you'd imagine having to do all of this live um, you can see how it can save us a whole lot of time and uh, really just headspace not having to uh, think about that. So close that out. And so with that, our workflow here is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reload. Our workflow here is um, gonna hit next, which will take us to pre-service playlist. And um, we can see that there's nothing on this, so nothing happened here. But I'm gonna go ahead and screen share into CG2. Make it kind of small here. Uh, which is a pro video player machine and um, when I hit next we're gonna see that CG2 Q campus news which is this first video here that is gonna cue this and so next and boom there's a video playing and it also queued this uh, custom control on the switcher which is neat you didn't see it happen but believe me it did <laughs> and um, now we can uh, let's just say the video is over we're ready to go to the pre-roll next pre-roll is queuing video switcher macro queued and so uh, we could have made that reminder check mic batteries or I don't know look at this thing or do this thing or whatever it's just a general use remind me to do something at this time and uh, we can clear and then this is assuming that we would have built out the rest of our, of our service with backgrounds and video switcher macros and so on and then we have our resi play down here and all of that and so that's what basically running a service looks like uh, before it you would uh, go in and program it out um, and then a couple more useful things is if we go up to your settings here and um, we can add a plan queue which is kind of a general use there's no specific time that we would use this um, and um, 
that works just like anything else. Uh, we add whatever string of cues that we want here, and then let's give it a name and add. And we can see that it gave us a button at the bottom here. So uh, with that, it's the same actions that you can put in any of these. It's just that it's available to use at any time. So in my case here at Lakeland, I use these for like lower third graphics, uh, like people's names. We can click Passage Old Sims or whatever, and uh, it cues a pro video player a cue for his name or host alter call or whatever. It's just whenever you don't have a specific time that you need something um, or if you don't know that you need it at all. It's just a catch-all, uh, use it whenever type thing. Um, then also, let's see what, what else we got here. Um, with that, we can uh, remove a plan queue. If we hit that, uh, say we messed up and we want to delete it or we don't need it anymore or whatever, just select the, the one that you want to remove, remove, okay, it'll reload. And it's gone. So cool. Um, Another thing is this loads the plan from Planning Center, but if a change was made to the plan while this is open, then it does not check for that. And so, uh, let's say, middle of a service, whatever, somebody adds an item or um, reorders an item or what have you. Let's move the altar call up to above this song. Uh, it's not going to update here, but what you can do is uh, go here and reload the plan. And we'll see that the altar call is now above our song here. So I'm going to move that back. So just take note of that. Uh, what else we got here? We have, uh, we have global queues, which is similar to a plan queue. Let's just do whatever here. These are um, things that you will use pretty often, um, but are too lazy to add down here each and every time. Um, let me just do it and show you. Essentially, your global cues are, uh, you hit your button up here and then here's our cue. These are the same thing as these, but these are persistent between services. Uh, and so if I loaded up a different service, this would still be here, whereas these would not. And so these are more useful for um, um, restarting devices and more like utility type things where you don't want to have to add it each time. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have uh, removed that. That works the exact same way. Uh, other than that, that is about it. Uh, if you're using Key Pros, you can download those clips instead of having to go to the web page and download them and so on, as well as format them. A um, couple more things in Device Editor. Let's see here what else we got. Um, we have a Ross NK router, um, which just read up here, it's a pretty specific use case for it. Um, I'll pull up mine. So I'm just going to name it NK and then our serial device is 10, 1, 60, 80, 4, 4, 9, 9, 9. Uh, This is the number of inputs on our router. In my case it's 72 and 72 for outputs. And um, we can add a a labels file for that which is neat which is actually the same exact file that's created in dashboard so all of these labels uh, if we look at our global labels here um, you can save as and then that'll make this labels file so uh, I'm gonna cancel that and then we can add that same file which will help us later on and um, our labels file that we saved, I'm just going to select that the same way that the custom control one was. Add. 
close that out. Um, anything else here? Not particularly. Um, oh, that does bring us to, oops, to um, the custom control labels. Uh, and so here we have, uh, make sure you have uh, open office installed and um, we're going to open up our file that we associated with that and uh, here we will associate our custom control names here this is strictly just naming and it's just there to help you remember what's what it doesn't do anything other than that um, so with that we can um, name our one one um, what's going on? LED key on. Um, it's not liking that. LED key off, and then we would just go down the line. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. And, um, uh, I don't know, let's try bank try bank two um our bank two would be and let's do one more um so we have eight nine ten eleven twelve so uh bank two twelve will be led cg4 And uh, all I'm going to do, save, you're done. And so, aside from the crashes, I'm not sure why that happened. Let's open it back up. Um, and uh, when we go to add a video switcher queue... Select our bank one. There's our there's our cues that we added, and we would simply just go down the line and um, uh, on each one, just add our name for it, and it would take a little bit, but it does save you a lot of time in the end. Um, especially if we look at what I use here at Lakeland, it's it's quite a few and not having to memorize that is very nice so uh, that's about it let me know if you have any questions this is all subject to change obviously I'm still fixing bugs and all of that types of type of thing so we're getting there <laughs>